welcome to DC Today. It is Tuesday, August 29th. It's good to be back with you today. Um, good day at markets. Um, in fact, it's the third day in a row uh, in August uh, that we've uh, that we've been up here, which is nice. August has been a negative month uh, in equities. So far, we're down about a little less than 2%, probably 1.8% 1. 1, yeah, 1. or something on the month on the S&P 500. But a couple up days in a row I'll take before uh, the last week of summer here ends and we hit, hit Labor Day. Um, there was um, uh, news today. The biggest news was was the JOLTS report, which is a new job opening report that comes out. It was expected to have something like 9.5 uh, million, roughly 9.478 million. And we got much lower than that, about 8.827 million. Um, so the, it, it's if you're... It, and I'm not necessarily, frankly, but if, if you're looking at um, something like the Phillips curve where you need more uh, unemployment or, or a lousy or a weakening jobs picture in order to have inflation come down, um, then this was sort of a, a, a tip of the hat for that happening today um, a little bit. And I do think the Fed is, is looking at that as one of their metrics. So uh, fewer job openings um, potentially with uh, the same amount of people looking for work you know, could potentially mean little higher unemployment. It's basically one of the things the Fed wants to see. There's other things too. I mean, this week we have the official jobs number will be on Friday, but we've got uh, AP payroll tomorrow, which uh, was 324 last month. So it was much better. And so we're looking for something below 200,000, I think would be market friendly. Um, you know, maybe a 170 would be good. But if you got a combination of the JOLTS report today, ADP tomorrow, that comes in somewhere below 200. And then a PCE number on Thursday that is something around 0.2% for the month. Um, if all those things sort of line up, I do think you'll have Fed futures start to move a little bit back towards, you know, a peak rate narrative on the Fed. Right now, it's sort of 80% for September, they'll pause, but then November and December are both uh, about a 50-50. So we'll see if that stuff all comes in. But for today, um, um, uh, pretty big news out of China. Again, I, I spoke about it yesterday, but they are doing different things to try to stimulate their economy. It's a slowing economy. And um, today they uh, are proposing lowering mortgage rates on existing loans for first loans for existing uh, mortgage holders in China to try to help you know alleviate those payments and then hopefully drive some consumption in, in the country. And while I, I don't know if these things will ultimately work, I mean, just like we would say, don't fight the Fed in the U.S., I, I think it's fair to say if they're going to be, um, you know, um, committed to, to stimulating their economy, they'll probably eventually in some some form get get something out of that. Um, one of the things we've seen is a, is a pretty strong energy sector. Um, oil was up today again, about a percent and a half, 1.39 percent on the day. And so you've seen some strength in oil and energy. Gasoline prices in the country are back above four, right at four dollars a gallon. And uh, the sector itself is the only sector in the S&P 500 that has 100% of its constituents, uh, meaning the stocks inside of the sector, up over its 50-day moving average and over 90% uh, that are up over its 200-day moving average. So th there's been kind of a broad-based rally in these energy stocks. Um, and uh, and I, I just based on the flows, I don't know that that's the ninth inning. I think we're somewhere in the middle there. There's probably more to go. Um, and I, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, although it is a core component inside of um, or non core component, but it's a component inside of inflation and CPI. So we ought to be remember that, that that higher energy prices can keep inflation a little bit higher for longer. I think the, the bigger picture will be housing that comes down in that in that CPI figure will offset some of the energy it goes up a little bit. But on the day, um, great day. I mean, we finished right at the highs. So it was basically we opened up and we just sort of built on gains throughout the day. I think it was the jobs number, like I said, that was a little bit better. Rates came down as a, as a, as a result. Two-year rates are now under five. In fact, they're 490 and they were 510 a day ago. So it's a pretty big move lower, at least intraday a day ago. So big move more, lower on short rates, uh, move lower on long rates as well. Um, and broad-based rally. Top sector of the day was communication services. There was a couple upgrades um, or one notable upgrade on, on some of those two big names in telecom uh, that helped on the day too. But all sectors were high on the day. Utilities were up you know, a quarter of a point on the day too. So that's what I have for you as a recap for the day. Uh, I'll keep it concise. And uh, like I said, tomorrow we've got an ADP figure uh, out and um, 
uh, some other data uh, that we'll be able to go through with you uh, tomorrow. Oh, there's a GDP revision tomorrow too. So we're expecting it to just basically be in line. So 2.4% is what we have. And I, I suspect it'll end up being about the same. But with that, I will be back with you. I wish you all a good evening and reach out with questions. Thank you. Mm -hmm.